So the other night, I finally got a little bit of a break. My wife was asleep, my daughter was asleep, I had a free hour and a half to myself, and I was just sitting on my computer wondering what I should do, and so I booted up Burnout Paradise. That may be a little bit controversial for Burnout fans out there, I know some people don't like that game, but I like it, I find it to be a lot of fun, and it was a total blast from the past for me to just kind of barrel down the streets of the game. I had to start a new game because there's no cloud saves on Steam for whatever reason, so um, I was just playing it for an hour and a half straight, and I really, really enjoyed it. It was like such a peaceful time for me. It was, it's a strange thing to be driving and crashing into cars and have it be peaceful, but man, it was so peaceful. I had a different idea for today's video, but... After that experience, I'm like, you know what, let's make a burnout car. I really want to make something that you'd find in Burnout Paradise. For this build, I'm going to use a body that I've never used before, basically only on the fact that it looks absolutely ridiculous and strangely cool, so let's do it. So cars in Burnout Paradise and Burnout games in general generally need to be fast, they need to be powerful, and they need to be tough. They need to be resistant. And those are the themes that we're going to go for today. We need power, we need a lot of presence, basically, <laughs> and toughness is very, very important. I'm going to go for a steel sort of chassis. I think that's important. Uh, we'll keep it monocoque and we'll go again steel. I'm actually going to go light AHS steel just to get it a little bit lighter, hopefully a little bit faster <laughs> with that. And uh, man, this thing could totally be mid-engine to get away with it. It probably would be mid-engine realistically, but let's try front longitudinal and see what we can fit into it. And I'll just keep the suspension fairly straightforward. That should be good. Feels like it's been ages since I made a car from scratch. And a lot of that actually just has to do to not having any time recently. Like honestly, I have very, very little free time to do any of this stuff, but I really enjoy making these videos. So that's why I'm here. Now, engine, I mean, <laughs> you know we gotta make it a V something. I was like, okay, V8, that's a little bit too basic. Let's do a V10. I always do V8s, let's make it a V10. I'm gonna go for a heavy aluminum engine, uh, and we're gonna make it single overhead cam, maybe three, three valves is an awkward one. I don't know, let's make it unique. This car is unique, so let's make it unique. Now I'm wondering about turbos. I, we didn't do turbos on the last build, so let's do turbos on this build, which means that I'm actually gonna shrink the displacement down a little bit. Let's make it like a four liter V10. I'm going pretty heavy on the big bore short stroke uh, level here, so not exactly a stroker, but it should have really good low-end torque and I'm hoping that that kind of gets us where we want to be um, but we'll have to see <laughs> aluminum heads uh, going on to this stuff here it's you can't really do any of this stuff now you kind of have to come back to it so we'll go through there same thing here turbos we can do two turbos on a v10 uh, we'll just keep it smart boost for now and once we put some injection and such on here it's gonna get good. Yes, please. That is a pretty wicked V10 already. Race intake and all that sort of stuff. These are not street cars. They are race cars through and through. Okay, so I was having a few issues there, but uh, I managed to make it to 700 horsepower fairly easily. Just basically I had to turn this stuff up because uh, it was dying on all possible levels. Compressor is pretty restrictive, but we're making like beautiful torque, beautiful power. 700 horses is not something to laugh at. That is good horsepower. Um, our power threshold is only 419. Honestly, I don't even know how to raise this, but I guess it just has to do with the components you pick and the variability of things. That being said, I don't really care. <laughs> These cars get smashed up constantly. Everything is going to be replaced. It doesn't have to be realistic. We could probably go VVL and VVT and we gain a little bit extra power from that. Um, I think everything else though is going to be fine where it is. I don't mind the look of this engine at all. 4 liters, 730 horsepower. Let's send it as is. Oh man, we got some cool versions of this thing I didn't realize. This is absolutely wicked. Same thing with this one. Oh man, these are these are cool. There's also a Ute version as well. <laughs> That's a good one too. I think I'm gonna have to go with this just because I think it's it's just cool. I'm I'm also going to try to morph this body. Um, some mod bodies don't morph, but this one does, thankfully, so we can make it even more awkward. Oh, that's really funny. So when you shrink the body in, it actually makes a huge kink on the back of it. Pulling it out obviously stretches it out, but 
bring it in too much. Massive issue. Oh wow, that is even cooler. So you can move this to the back, but again, it makes a huge kink in the side of the car, so you have to be really darn careful with this thing. Okay, I've come up with like a quick color scheme, but this thing obviously needs a livery, and it's going to need a lot of design work to get it to where I want it to be. Uh, but I have a couple ideas just kind of based on what I'm looking at here. So let's go through the basic stuff first, keeping in mind that this is a 700 horsepower a twin turbo V10 fire breathing dragon of a car. It needs to look that way. The wheels straight off the design here just kind of are huge, which is cool. But I do need to come up with something for this. Some of the cars that are my favorite in uh, Burnout Paradise are the muscle cars. The tuner cars are cool, but the muscle cars are just absolutely wicked. So I want to give this at least a little bit of a taste of muscle. Not easy to do with a body like this, but I'm going to try. These rims are not a good choice, but I absolutely love them, so I'm going to keep them. And with that, uh, let's quickly jump to the actual wheels themselves, because these are way too small and way too shrunk in. we got to get the stance right before I can actually do the design. So this is one area where I've been debating with myself whether or not it's actually worth it to go here, but with all-wheel drive, probably. Let's just do, like, advanced all-wheel drive with a sequential transmission and... Six speeds, I guess? I'll come back to this. Semi-slick tires, of course, and the biggest that we can get on the front and the back. Hopefully gonna give us some decent stance, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's actually perfect. Okay, so I have the car sitting sort of how I want it. This is the lowest that it'll go by default, but obviously we can make it squat a little bit more, and I do actually intend to do that. Uh, using the advanced trim settings, we can do a lot with this i.e. the front ride height can probably go down a little bit um, before we get too too low we gotta make sure it's not gonna scrape on the ground so I'm gonna lower this down just so we can see it as it's hitting yeah it looks decent there but I want to give it a little bit of a rake okay that is absolutely perfect that is exactly what I want a lot more in the back pretty much touching the fenders in the front that thing is mint already, it looks really nice. Okay, so let's ruin it with uh, features. <laughs> Sometimes features don't always get the best look, but I'm gonna try my best to make it look decent. It's been so long since I made a car, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, immediately I'm screwing up. So the engine is in the front of this thing, but it is like way in there. It is deep inside of it. If you were to actually Oh, well, it's a front engine car, but not really. It's almost mid engine. The entire engine is behind the front axle. I think the proper term for this is front mid engine car. <laughs> as confusing as that is. So, one thing about these burnout cars is they always look ratty, and I think that that's part of the charm. That's really something that is intriguing for me, um, and it just. It makes them cooler. It, it, like, it's fun to drive absolutely spotless cars in games like Forza and that, but it's another thing to drive, like, grungy vehicles and stuff like Wreckfest, Burnout, Trailout, all of these games. Flat Out, of course. I like that these cars have, like, mismatched body panels and, and there's always, like, scars and body, <laughs> body lines on there that that you wouldn't see in other games, and that's the fun part for me. Whether or not I'm going to be able to recreate that well, that's a whole other story. <laughs> I'm going to try my best, but you guys probably know if you follow me. I'm not the best designer. If you want to see stuff like that, that's where my Discord comes in. There's a lot of really skilled people on there. If you ever wonder why I never enter automation official design contests, it's because I suck. <laughs> That's the honest reason. Okay, let's uh, let's talk <laughs> let's talk less about that and more about the design idea. So basically, what I'm trying to do is in in my head, this car is a race car. It's like an old race car that uh, its its time is done and now it's hanging out on the streets. Um, so I'm going to build it in <laughs> with that in mind, even though it doesn't make any contextual sense just because I think that that's cool. I'm gonna have some like big lights here and then I think we'll do pop-ups maybe, uh, something like that, some big vents and stuff for the hood and then uh, some wings and things back here. Obviously it needs a livery and uh, the important basic car stuff including exhaust, but it's not gonna be super, super in-depth. I'm trying to keep it relatively simple. Okay, so some time has passed and I have designed the entire car. Let's go through it. So just some simple stuff. Uh, basically, I gave it a toe strap. I gave it some lights. I didn't end up doing pop-ups. I just like these ones better, so I went with those. 
Uh, we have a full-on sort of body kit style setup here that'll give us arrow to work with. Lots of vents, <laughs> F1 style mirrors, but sort of embedded. I didn't do an interior, but I did do a cage, so it has a roll cage in it, which is cool. Um, little Miata door handles. We've got fuel, uh, no sunroof or anything like that. It's a race car. Duck bill spoiler and uh, super, super basic style taillights. I need to flesh that out a little bit more, but I'm not really sure what to do. But I had a huge wing on this, like a GTR style wing, and it, it looks good, but it just wasn't the same. Like duck bills kind of speak to me on the inside a little bit, and so I had to have it here. <laughs> it's only really missing a few things, that being a livery, and a name. The Dead Maker Bumblebee will be delivered to the junkyard. Actually, let's call it the Dead, Be Dead Maker Bumblebee GT. <laughs> I think that is even more fitting. I don't know, these cars always have such edgy names, so Dead Maker, it's cool. Man, oh man, this thing is so cool as is. Okay, I'm gonna do some, like, a quick livery. I was gonna go all out and do, like, a full-on thing with stripes and stuff, but let's just keep it simple. Let's add some sponsors and send this thing out because it's just looking mint as is i, I don't want to ruin it so i have a pretty simple trick to get uh, these kind of decals to end up on both sides in the exact same place it's kind of stupid but the flip to the other side thing doesn't work for me with these for whatever reason so if you play this game and you have a better trick let me know but basically what you can do is duplicate it by holding down shift put it right back over top so now we have another version and then mirror it then go to the other side, go here, unmirror it, and then flip. <laughs> now we have two. Uh, dumb, but functional. Okay, that's a super quick livery, but I think it's good enough. It's time that I went through the rest of this car, because it looks cool, and it probably would drive terribly. <laughs> I haven't done any tuning at all. I did add a little bit of a badge there. That's <laughs> Just ignore that. Man, this thing is absolutely wicked. I'm super, super happy with it. Um, yeah, okay. Let's probably try to get this thing to work. Current top speed, theoretically, is uh, maxed out. We, we definitely need a little bit more top gear out of this. Would you look at that? They added drivability, sportiness, and reliability penalty into this uh, gearing chart here so we can actually see more stuff now, which is cool. It's good. Um, more details, although, I mean, this thing is confusing enough as is. So our gearbox actually has a reliability issue going on here, which is kind of interesting. You can see at the bottom of the yellow there, it says the gearbox reliability is low, increase gearbox quality, reduce engine peak torque, or reduce gearbox torque ratio. So uh, I got to tune this thing properly to get it to actually work. I went into the brakes uh, that's over here and I made them maximum size. So they're absolutely gigantic. You can't actually see them in there, but six piston carbon ceramic brakes are what we need to stop this thing. It is made out of steel. It is not the lightest of race cars, uh, but I think it should work. I mean, you saw there, the thing is 1700 kilos. That's heavy. Okay, aerodynamics, hey, we're actually getting good aero, admittedly, which is crazy. Let's go active wing. Um, that lowers it a little bit, but it raises a little bit in the front, which is good. Balancing it out is probably for the better. Overall, I think everything else is good. Like, I don't want to get too, too specific with this, but basically I just slapped a bunch of stuff on it. You could see there as I went through it. And now we have a car <laughs> and it has terrible issues with brake fade. Um, the brakes are as big as they can be, so I don't think I can do anything else with that. This thing is absolutely crazy. It looks like a Factory 5 kit car. I love it. <laughs> Let's go drive it in BeamNG and see how it does. Alright, so here is the car in BeamNG. Everything came out really good with the new livery thing that uh, compresses them and then puts them down. The red did not come in on the taillights, unfortunately, but it's not the end of the world. Everything else is looking minty. I'm very happy with this car. Let's take it for a drive. First of all, though, what's it sound like? <laughs> okay, it shoots flames. I, I think I've been successful in my goals here. Uh, just, just a little bit. We also have two-wheel drive options, by the way. I believe that this will mean we can do a cool burnout. Yeah, no, that's cool. Okay, first of all, let's start in four-wheel drive. Wow, this thing rips hard. Oh my goodness. I forgot that it's a sequential, no clutch needed. 
but I still gotta shift the gears. It burns things really good. Oh man, you can see there's scraping going on on the ground. One of the things that I really value with, uh, oh jeez, well, <laughs> durability test part one. Wow, that actually took a pretty good beating there, and <laughs> it doesn't look that bad. This thing's tough. And it starts right up and continues to drive. Now that's in the burnout spirit. One of the things that's really important about Burnout Paradise in my mind is that when the cars come near you, especially the AI cars, it sounds crazy. Like the V8 noises in that game are insane. And it's something I really enjoy about that game. Like put on some headphones, listen to the Paradise City soundtrack, and also turn up the volume of the AI cars because everything just sounds good. This car definitely fits that spirit. It sounds great. It really does. I'm super, super pleased with this. And the way that it drives, it's an absolute handful. I don't know. <laughs> That's as intended. Looks like some areas here got a little bit more fleshed out because I'm seeing trails and stuff that I have not seen in this game, uh, funnily enough. Let's uh, maybe do a little bit of exploration. <laughs> not exactly an off-road guy here or ready for off-road with a car like this. So I just want to say before we do any further testing, because I have some ideas that we should probably do, uh, if you enjoyed this video so far, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, it really does help me a lot. This channel is small in the grand scheme of things, and I'm trying to get it bigger. I'm trying to make this my thing full-time, although we're pretty far away from that. Uh, every little bit helps, so I'd appreciate that a lot. And if you comment, then... Uh, I'd appreciate that too. Let me know what you guys think of this card. What do you think of Burnout? What is your favorite Burnout game? If you say Burnout 3, then welcome to the club. But if you say anything else, uh... <laughs> I'm judging. Just kidding. So, what do I have in store for us? Well, I'm going to destroy my video RAM <laughs> because I'm going to spawn some traffic. Spawning traffic in this game is pretty easy. Basically, you just gotta go here and uh yeah let's spawn normal this is going to take a little bit of time but it's going to drastically lower the performance of the game in place of that we are going to have a lot of traffic and traffic is cool because we can crash into people well the frame rate has taken a massive dive wow there's parked cars too oh man it's been so long since i made traffic appear in this game and the performance isn't actually as bad as i thought oh I'm so happy. The thing about parked cars too is you could totally like steal them. You can get out of your car in this game, although I forgot how. Or like pick them up on a flatbed or something, that'd be kind of cool. But anyways, we got an intersection over there and uh, I think it's time that we figured out our crash breaker. How many cars can we take out before this thing uh, gives away? I'm gonna give myself a couple cheat codes too. One of the best parts about burnout is the crashing into traffic at high speed and then calculating how much money you've caused or how much damage you've caused based on how much money it is to repair everything. Um, I'm gonna do that now. Some of these intersections are not quite as clogged as I was hoping that they would be. The traffic is just on normal, so I guess that's just how it works. But let's go find an intersection to crash into. I was hoping that this one would still be populated, but it obviously isn't. Uh, so I took off a guy's bumper, and he's still alive. <laughs> that was a really bad first attempt. No way, he's just sitting there. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I am very sorry. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this against parked cars. There's no, there's no way out of it. Let's just go for the stuff that's sitting ducks. Okay, how can I hit these five parked cars in a way that is gonna cause the most damage? I'm thinking the best way is to just rule out the other two and go dead on through these three. So I'm gonna back her on up right over to the wall here. Actually, let's get as close as we can and then with this down, let's go full speed into there. <laughs> I mean, that was a decent amount of damage to three cars. If we take a look at the free cam, like this guy, oh geez, this guy's pretty much toast. That one might be fixable, and the, f the third one is definitely fine, but my car? Not bad, overall. Okay, I see a couple of cars over there. That intersection's kind of busy, so let's go for it. 
Full speed. And... That's one, that's one. Can we cause a pileup? This is so anticlimactic, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I thought that something would have happened here. Okay, hold on a second. AI, um, flee. Okay, now, now things are going to get a little bit more dramatic. <laughs> Although I didn't anticipate that they would flee directly into me. No way, that's the car I already smashed into and he's running away. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's it, that's it. We're chasing this guy down. He is not getting away. I'm already damaged from that one knock, but this guy's damaged too. Oh! <laughs> I'm so sorry. I should be playing with this more often. Okay, my car keeps dying because the first gear is pretty high. Let's go through these two, and then I want to come back and smash into my friend back there. Okay, okay, okay. Here's the pileup I've been craving. <laughs> yes! Oh, man. Yes! Okay, we caused a little bit of damage. Okay, I've reset myself, and I'm gonna try that one more time. Hopefully everybody else is reset too. There's a lot of damage going on down here. This is my time to shine. Yes! Oh my goodness, this car is so buff. Honestly, look, I can take serious hits that you can't take in regular BeamNG cars. They're folding like butter in comparison to this thing. Although I do keep dying because I keep forgetting to shift down into first again. <laughs> Look at the carnage. Ah, this has made it all worth it. Well guys, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you thought of this burnout tribute in the comments. Uh, I'm just gonna keep smashing into cars for a bit, I guess. Uh, but I'll see you again next week. More stuff coming up. If you want to be to play some of these games on the channel, let me know. I have a lot of fun with them. Um, but for now, it's BeamNG. It's automation. It's uh, me smashing into stuff. I'll see you again very, very soon. Maybe. If I survive this. Which I might not. Just want to give a special shout out to those who have chosen to support this channel in the V8 tier uh, of my YouTube supporter group. Some people being here for like 48 months. That's like four years. What the heck? <laughs> that's ridiculous. Anyways, uh, Overlord, Terrio One, J Pope, Davis Heister, Sin Lab, Goofy Plays, Phoenix Shark, Baja Blast, Mancini Country, Shadow Jasper, and I Look Fall High Milk. Thank you everybody for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, I remember oh, a couple episodes ago, I was like, I'm gonna talk about these things that happen all the time. Man, because my latest video has done so well, I've been getting so many random like sponsorship requests a lot of them are from china or like chinese companies so that the stuff that they send me doesn't make any sense in english but a few of them have been very unique like one of them sent me a sponsorship thing that was like an ai tool that reads pdfs for you and summarizes them and i'm like <laughs> why but it's just strange stuff so is this what it's like to be a popular YouTube creator? <laughs> like, I imagine that the, the inboxes of any creator over 100,000 subs is just maxed with all these random offers. Like, they don't offer to give you much for this stuff. They'll give you a product and that's it. Some of them actually offer money, but I don't think that they're actually uh, like good for it, if you know what I mean. Like, anyway, sponsorships are such a weird thing on YouTube, but... It's, it's one of those things that's very hard to navigate from a moral perspective as well, at least for me. I know some people just don't have those issues, but anyways, <laughs> I'll see you guys again soon. You won't see any crappy stuff on this channel. I'm going to try to keep it good. Um, yeah, so thanks for supporting me, and I'll see you again next time.